Psalm chapter 9, for the director of music, to the tune of The Death of the Son, a psalm of David. I will praise you, O Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of all your wonders. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. My enemies turn back. They stumble and perish before you. For you have upheld my right and my cause. You have sat on your throne, judging righteously. You have rebuked the nations and destroyed the wicked. You have blotted out their name forever and ever. Endless ruin has overtaken the enemy. You have uprooted their cities. Even the memory of them has perished. The Lord reigns forever. He has established his throne for judgment. He will judge the world in righteousness. He will govern the peoples with justice. The Lord is a refuge for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. Those who know your name will trust in you, for you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. Sing praises to the Lord enthroned in Zion. Proclaim among the nations what he has done, for he who avenges blood remembers. He does not ignore the cry of the afflicted. O Lord, see how my enemies persecute me. Have mercy and lift me up from the gates of death, that I may declare your praises in the gates of the daughter of Zion, and there rejoice in your salvation. The nations have fallen into the pit they have dug. Their feet are caught in the net they have hidden. The Lord is known by his justice. The wicked are ensnared by the work of their hands. Hegayon, Selah. The wicked return to the grave, all the nations that forget God. But the needy will not always be forgotten, nor the hope of the afflicted ever perish. Arise, O Lord, let not man triumph. Let the nations be judged in your presence. Strike them with terror, O Lord. Let the nations know they are but men. Selah. Psalm chapter 9, today is January 26th, 2023. Um, some really great YouTube videos and one particular channel that I'm going to uh, uh, link to in the show notes. And it's uh, One Punch Apologetics. And it is so, it's so much fun. Uh, happy to send you to it. Uh, and to my brother over at One Punch, um, what, what awesome work you're doing. Keep it up, my friend. I don't know you. Uh, more than what I'm able to see on your video channels, but I'm, um, man, the, your incorporation of the kids and stuff is just, uh, it's a uh, heartwarming and, uh, and, and fun to watch. So thank you so much. And, uh, and so happy to point people to you. Uh, another video I watched and honestly, guys, I'm probably going to go back and watch this one again before I post it. Uh, basically an, an atheist who uh, converted to Christianity, someone who, had significant me mental health, violent mental health issues uh, by their own admission and their own description. But I thought it was notable. So look for look for that uh, in, in upcoming days. I'm going to try to get to that if I can, amongst all the other things that I uh, would like to try to get to. I do have a couple things to comment on with regard to this particular psalm. Seeking God is something that's n not, never fruitless. It's never fruitless to go out and search for the living God. So say the scriptures, and so say the experiences of millions and even billions of other human beings. And so for those who do go out and seek, you already are aware of this. And for those of you who think, man, I, I really would like a dose of, I really would like a dose of a, a gigantic, powerful, loving creator in my life. Well, seek him. Psalm 9 Verse 10, those who know your name will trust in you, for you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. So if you seek the Lord, he will not forsake you, and you will come to know his name. Uh, if, if your heart is open to it, right? If you go out seeking and you're earnest, uh, you, will, you will be someone who comes to know the name of the Lord, and you'll come to trust in him because you will see him as he reveals himself to you. So, that's one thing. Another thing that popped up, and this is kind of maybe a teaser again for you guys can send me comments about things that you would like for me to to try to get to. I am limited in what I can do, but um, just this morning I was reading of from uh, Ayn Rand, The Fountainhead, 
Now, I had read the Atlas Shrugged before, uh, but never uh, the Fountainhead, and so I'm making my way through. And I ran across a couple of passages in, in that book this morning that um, really stuck out to me, and one of them had to do with a, one character's approach to what I would label as the hero of the story. I'm not sure Ayn Rand would call it the hero or the protagonist, uh, but the, the character's name is Howard Roark. And there is someone who's approaching Roark and basically becoming friends with him. And there's a description of this uh, particular figure in the book that has to do with judging things uh, appropriately and how uh, we're drawn to that. And so I want to, I have some observations that I want to make about that particular passage because you know, and what's drawing me to that here is, of course, there's a couple of verses here in Psalm chapter 9 uh, that refer to uh, God being a judge. So verses 7, beginning of verse 7, the Lord reigns forever. He has established his throne for judgment. He will judge the world in righteousness. He will govern the peoples with justice. Imagine, imagine if there, imagine the perfect conception of justice. I think we all have some idea of that inside of ourselves. Like everyone receiving their due, right? Their due for the good things they've done and the penalty for the bad things they've done. The sort of correction for the evildoer, uh, for lack of a better term. And so there's one passage uh, on judgment. There's a quick uh, uh, reference in verse 16. The Lord is known by his justice. Uh, the wicked are ensnared by the work of their hands. And then there's this amazing verse, uh, the last two verses close out. Arise, O Lord, let not man triumph. Now, what an interesting thing to say as, from someone who's a human being to say, God, don't let human beings win. Don't let human beings win. Let the nations be judged in your presence, says the scripture. Strike them with terror, O Lord. Let the nations know they are but men. This is a man saying, we're, we're, we're getting out of hand, God. Please don't let us get out of hand. Now, this can be perverted and warped into a, into a thing that basically says, God, please destroy all of us. Uh, please just get rid of us. Just wipe us off the face of the earth. Um, and we may pray that or we may say that. And that's okay because we're human beings and we can say that. And we can even ask God for that. But I think that that's one of those prayers that's more for us to say than for God to answer, perhaps. Not speaking for God, of course. He has certainly spoken for himself, it appears, through the scripture. And God is a God of love and loves us. But this is a, this is a man. This is a, a king. Uh, this, is a, this is David the king saying, basically, we are not able to accomplish justice perfectly. We are human beings. So God, please, uh, don't, let, don't let us be in charge of final justice. Let me read the verses again. Arise, O Lord, let not man triumph. Let the nations be judged in your presence. Strike them with terror, O Lord. Let the nations know they are but men. Don't let our pride and our ability to do the wrong things from a position of pride or smug knowingness or from... Uh, thinking that we are able to know so much that we can judge all things well and run all things well and strike strike those of us uh, who who want to exceed the, our limitations in unhealthy ways strike us with terror give us a proper fear of you oh God give us a proper fear of you because we, beneath that pride and when that's stripped away and we're naked before ourselves, before the world, exposed for what we really are and our limitations, we do want justice. We crave justice. We, we crave to be made perfect so that we can withstand a perfect judge, so that we can stand before the judge of the universe and be found uh, worthy and good. We hunger for that. And of course, there is a way, there is a way to, to stand before the creator of everything uh, and be covered 
and be be seen in perfection and that is through putting on the perfection of his son that's the christian gospel it is that we want you to triumph in your perfect justice god we know that your perfect justice means that that's a state of perfection and that we being imperfect need to be somehow need to somehow be made perfect before we're presented in in judgment so I, that's all i have to say on <laughs> out of psalm chapter 9 this morning thanks for joining me